Good morning, boys and girls. I'm coming to you from my living room in South Berwick. Karen Lee for Karen Reads. Okay. I have a great book for you today called Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch. It's written by Eileen Spinelli. She became a writer when she was, she was six years old and her father gave her an old manual typewriter. You have to press really hard on the keys. And he put it on a little orange crate for her to create a desk. And her mother gave her a box of paper and that's how she got started. She gets her inspiration from everything in her life. She said one day she walked by a pet shop and saw some puppies in the window Voila, a book about puppies. Okay. Um, she's written many books. She loves being a writer. Her husband is a writer too. And after high school, she did everything she needed to so she could write. She waitressed. She was a secretary in an airplane factory. She had all these different jobs just so she could write on the side. And it worked. She's a full-time writer now. So her dream came true. Just lots of hard work on her part. All right, the book is illustrated by Paul Yalowitz. He illustrates books and magazines and he teach, teaches illustration at Framingham State College in Framingham, Mass. So he's a neighbor of ours. All right. Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, by Eileen Spinelli, illustrated by Paul Yellowitz. Mr. Hatch was tall and thin, and he did not smile. Every morning at 6.30 a.m. sharp, he would leave his brick house and walk eight blocks to the shoelace factory where he worked. At lunchtime, he would sit alone in a corner, eat his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drink a cup of coffee. Sometimes he brought a prune, prune for dessert. You can see him leaving his house at 6.30 a.m. sharp, and then him eating lunch all by himself. All his fellow workers are on the other side of the window there. After work, he would make two stops. At the newsstand to get the paper and at the grocery store to buy a fresh turkey wing for supper. After supper, he read the paper took a shower, and went to bed early. He keeps to himself. That is what everybody said about Mr. Hatch. One Saturday, when Mr. Hatch stepped onto the porch with his dustpan and broom, he got a surprise, a package wrapped in brown paper. He had never spoken to the postman before. Thank you, Mr. Goober, he said. Mr. Goober smiled. You're welcome. I always love delivering packages. Mr. Hatch tore the brown paper off. Inside was a white box, which he opened to find another box. This one was heart-shaped, all satiny red with a pink bow on top. It was filled with candy. Something fluttered to the porch floor. It was a little white car, card. He picked it up. It said, somebody loves you. 
Only then did he remember that this was Valentine's Day. That's a lot of chocolates. Mr. Hatch wondered and wondered now who would send these to me? He was all alone. He had no friends. And yet someone, someone had sent him a valentine. Who? Who? He put the box on the coffee table and tried to do some dusting. But every time he left the room, he had to keep peeking, peeking to the, see if the box was still really there. He dusted and dusted, and the dust cloth seemed to whisper, Somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. At last he flung the dust cloth away and exclaimed, Why, I've got a secret admirer. And then he did something he had never done before. He laughed. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands. And then he took a piece of candy from the box and ate it. Mr. Hatch changed his shirt and found some old aftershave in a bottom drawer. He splashed it on his face. He picked out a yellow tie with blue polka dots on it and put it on. And then he went for a walk. Maybe, he thought, I will meet the person who sent me the candy. Of course, no one had ever seen Mr. Hatch wearing a tie or smelling of aftershave or smiling. So he got a lot of attention. Mrs. Weed tripped over her dog. Mr. Dunwoody nearly fell off his ladder. And little Tina Finn spilled all the toys out of her wagon. Mr. Hatch waved hello to them all. On Monday, it was back to work. At lunchtime, Mr. Hatch sat in the middle of the cafeteria. He spoke to everyone and passed out chocolates from his heart box. On the way home, as usual, he stopped at the newsstand. Mr. Smith handed him the usual newspaper. I think. I'll have a package of mint, said Mr. Hatch, not as usual. Mr. Smith was shocked. Was that you speaking, Mr. Hatch? Indeed it was, said Mr. Hatch. I said I would also like a pack of mint. And if you, mind my, if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Smith, you don't look very well today. Mr. Smith recovered from his shock to reply, you're right. I don't feel well. I have a cold. I was supposed to go to the doctor's this afternoon, but the stand has been so busy, I haven't had a chance to get away. Mr. Hatch smiled. Why, I'd be happy to watch the stand for you while you go. Mr. Smith could hardly believe his ears. You would? Certainly. Just show me what to do. And so Mr. Hatch ran the newsstand for an hour. He wondered if any of the women who stopped to buy a paper or a magazine or a candy bar had sent him the mysterious valentine. There he is sharing his candy.
When Mr. Smith returned, Mr. Hatch made his usual stop at the grocery store. I'm a little tired of turkey wings, he told Mr. Todd. I think I'll have a nice, fresh slice of ham. Mr. Todd weighed the meat and wrapped it. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late. She hasn't come home from school yet, and I can't leave the store to look for her until my wife arrives. Goodness, why didn't you say so, said Mr. Hatch. I will go to look for her. And so he walked to school and found little Melanie Todd by the swings and brought her home. Thank you, thank you, said the grocer. Any time, said Mr. Hatch. After supper, Mr. Hatch did not bother to read the paper. He decided to bake brownies instead. It would be nice to make brownies to share the next day with the people at the shoelace factory. As he baked, the warm chocolate smell of brownies floated through the neighborhood. Children gathered around Mr. Hatch's house, sniffing the air. Well, I suppose the factory can wait, he said Mr. Hatch, as he looked out the window, and he brought out two platefuls. Now, what are brownies without lemonade, he said, and he stirred up a nice cold pitcher. When the parents came to gather their children, they had some brownies too. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs he remembered from, remembered from his childhood. Everybody danced. So the days and weeks went by. When Mr. Hatch wasn't smiling, he was laughing. And when he wasn't laughing, he was helping someone. And when he wasn't helping someone, he was having a party in his yard or on his porch. He seemed to have forgotten about finding the person who sent him the valentine. Then one afternoon, Mr. Goober, the postman, came to his door. His face was very serious. Come in, Mr. Goober, said Mr. Hatch. You look upset. I am upset, he said. I made a mistake some time ago. My supervisor is very angry with me. Do you? Do you? Mr. Goober, what is it? Do you recall the package I delivered to you? On Valentine's Day, I think it was. Yes, I believe so, replied Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. And you can see all the children that are hanging out at his house. I don't suppose you still have it, said Mr. Goober sadly. As a matter of fact, said Mr. Hatch, I still have the box. The candy is gone though. Why do you ask? The postman took a deep breath. I'm afraid I delivered it to the wrong address. It was supposed to go to another house. Mr. Hatch recalled tearing off the brown paper it had never occurred to him to look at the address. He fetched the heart-shaped box and the pink bow and gave them to the postman. I do hope your supervisor won't be too angry with you. The postman was heading down the sidewalk when Mr. Hatch called from his porch. Mr. Goober, I forgot something. 
he gave the postman the little white card that said, somebody loves you. And Mr. Goo, Mr. Hat is just starting to cry. Alone in his living room, Mr. Hatch sighed. Nobody loved me after all. Then he read the paper, took his shower, and went to bed early. The next morning, at 6.30 a.m. sharp, Mr. Hatch left his brick house and walked eight blocks to the shoelace factory. At lunchtime, he sat in a corner by himself ate his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drank a cup of coffee. Today, he didn't even bring the prune. And he's not eating with his colleagues, his friends from work. After work, he stopped at the newsstand for his paper but he did not speak to Mr. Smith. And when he ordered his turkey wing from Mr. Todd, he did not smile. Nor did he pat little Melanie Todd on the head, or bake brownies, or have picnics, or parties, or play his old harmonica anymore. Everybody whispered, what's wrong with Mr. Hatch? Mr. Gover, the postman, told them. But we love Mr. Hatch, insisted Mr. and Mrs. Dunwoody. He gave us flowers for our garden. He helped, helped us to mend our back fence. Mrs. Weed nodded. I love him too. He saves his bones for my dog, Ruffy. Ruffy barked. She loved Mr. Todd, too. Mr. Smith told everyone how Mr. Hatch had washed his newsstand so he could visit the doctor. And Mr. Todd told everyone how Mr. Hatch had found his little girl. All the children in the neighborhood remember Mr. Hatch's wonderful brownies and lemonade made, and most of all, his laughter. Poor Mr. Hatch, they said. What can we do? Then Mr. Goober announced, I have an idea. There's everybody thinking about Mr. Hatch and Mr. Goober having an idea. On Saturday morning, Mr. Hatch woke to a bright and sunny day. He put on his old overalls and went out to the porch with his dustpan and broom. He couldn't believe his eyes. All over the porch were red and white hearts and pink bows. There were boxes of candy on the chairs and yellow streamers flowing from the ceiling and sticking up out of his mailbox was a shining silver harmonica. The front yard was filled with people, happy, smiling people. They were holding up a huge sign with hand-painted letters. It said, everybody loves Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch dabbed at a tear with his handkerchief. I do believe he sniffed. Somebody loves me after all. And then he smiled. And then he laughed. And then he hurried down to be with his friends. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the book. And I hope you take care of yourself. Till next time, be good.
，拜拜。